Hey, what's up? You hear me, man? Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome. We're here in Yeshivat Chut Shel Chesed under the guidance of Rabbi Shalom Arush. May Hashem grant Mary for washing them out speedily. And today we are up to story number seven, the spider and the fly of Rabbi Nachman's stories. Rabbi Nachman said, I will tell you about the journey that I took, but do not think that I will tell you everything or that you will be able to understand. So this is one of the stories that are a little bit of a personal journey of the rabbi. There was once a king. He was attacked and he had to fight many wars, but in the end, he was victorious. He took many prisoners. So that's the outline of the story, that there was a king representing Rabbi Nachman himself. That he f had to fight many wars. We're here in this world to fight wars, but the, at the end, he was victorious. He took many prisoners. The king would hold an annual bull on the anniversary of his victory. Some like to say this has to do with Rabbi Nachman and Rosh Hashanah, that this was his day. Could be that was the day that he, he felt like he broke down the walls, that he was able to get to be where he was supposed to get to. Again, like we said in the beginning, you might not be able to understand everything. And he made a big party. And they would have comedy at the party. Acts would be performed. They would tell jokes about all the nations, including the Turks. Because for the European people, the Turks were funny people. They would mock the customs and the way in every single nation. And most probably, they also mocked the Jews. The king then gave an order that he be brought the book containing the customs customs and ways of every nation because he wanted to fully understand the jokes. Whenever he opened the book, he saw that the customs and the way that each nation were exactly as been uh, played out by the comedians. It could be assumed that one making the jokes and parodies had all consulted this book. Sometimes the Torah looks like a story, like a skit, like a play. But it really has deep meaning. For example, the Purim story. Looks like a whole play. You could make a whole show out of it. You could make a whole movie out of it. But there's many, many deep secrets hidden in these stories. While the king was looking at the book, he saw a spider crawling along the edge of the pages. And on top of the open page, there stood a fly. Where does the spider go? To the fly. While the spider was crawling towards the fly, a wind came and blew the page of the book, lifting it so that the spider could not get to the fly. The spider turned around and made believe that it was going the other way and no longer wanted to go towards the fly. So let's give an example. Here, we have a book here. The spider was on the edge of the papers. The fly was here. The page went up. So it sort of made a barrier between the fly and the spider. This happened many times preventing the spider from getting to the fly. This happened a number of times. Finally, the spider crawled towards the fly, but this time it got one of its legs slightly on the page. The page lifted itself up again with the spider partially on it. He's hanging on like on the cliff. And the page went down all the way so that the spider was caught between this page and the next. It crawled around, but it remained there, going lower and lower until nothing at all was left of it. Rabbi Nachman interrupted in the story and he said, I will not tell you what happened to the fly because the spider represents evil. And the fly represented here Rabbi Nachman himself. When the king saw this, he was astonished and he realized that this was not something trivial. He understood that he was being shown something important. Everything that we see in this world is all lessons for us to take for our life, whether for our relationship with the person that we're with or for our relationship between us and Hashem. He said, what's the meaning? And as he was thinking about it, he fell asleep over the book and began to dream. In his dream, he had a diamond. 
and he started, he stared at it, it was in his hand. And as he stared at it, a huge number of people began coming out of it. And he got scared. And he threw the diamond from his hand. Now, he sees another thing, that kings usually have a portrait over their throne, and on top of the portrait they had a crown. The men coming out of the diamond cut off the head of the king's portrait, the, the king itself, and they took the crown and threw it into the mud. All this was happening in the dream, let's remember. The men then ran towards the king to kill him. However, a page from the book upon which he was laying lifted itself up to protect him. So they were not able to do anything to him. They went away from him, and the page returned to its place, and they attacked him again. And the page lifted itself up again. This happened many times. So we see a similar story. What the king had, the story with the fly and the spider. It's happening to him in this dream between the amounts of people coming to try to get him and this, this page saving him. The king wanted to see which page was protecting him, but he was afraid to look. Sometimes when you know the truth, you're scared to taste that truth. He's not ready to jump into it. And he started to be. He started began to scream, "Help! Help!" All the ministers sitting nearby heard him scream. He was in his dream, but he he started screaming. Actually, he said, "You can't make wake up the king. It's not proper." So they started to make noises around him, try to wake him up, but he didn't hear anything. Meanwhile, in the dream, the dream continues on. A tall mountain appeared, and asked, "Why are you screaming so much? I have been sleeping for so long now." And nothing ever woke me up. But now you woke me up. How can I not scream, replied the king. People are attacking me and trying to kill me. The only thing that's protecting me is this page, said the mountain. If this page is protecting you, then you have nothing to fear. I also have many enemies attack attacking me. They make feasts and celebrations playing musical instruments and dancing. The reason for this celebration is that one group has devised a clever plan of how to climb the mountain, and they were celebrating with a feast and song. They come, all different groups come, and one thing protects me is the page of the customs that protected you. At the top of the mountain, there was a tablet. Maybe this is representing something like Har Sinai. On it were written the same customs that were on the page that protected him, as well as the nation to which it pertained. However, since the mountain was so tall, it was impossible to read the script. At the bottom of the mountain, there's another tablet. Written on there were the words, Only one who has all his teeth can climb the mountain. However, Hashem had arranged things that a certain type of grass grew on the, around the mountain. And as you would approach it, whether you went by foot, whether you on on a car, Wherever you were, on a wagon, your teeth would all fall out. Piles of teeth lay there like mountains. A little freaky. Then the people who had come out of the diamond took the portrait, put it together, restored the portrait as it was originally. They took the crown, washed it off. They hung both the portrait and the crown in their proper places. And with that, the king woke up. He immediately looked at the page that had protected him to see which nation's customs it, be it contained. And he saw that it was the customs of the Jews. He began to look at the page in a sincere manner, and he understood the real truth, realizing that there's something called the Torah, and that's the way a Jew lives according to the Torah. He made up his mind that he wants to become Jewish. However, he also wanted to know what can be done to return everyone. This is a good person, a person that, that finds the truth. He wants everybody to know the truth with him. The king made up his mind that he will travel about to find the wise men who would be able to interpret his dream. He took along two men and began traveling around the world. He did not go as a king, but as a simple person. He went from city to city, from country to country, asking, where is there a wise man who, had, who can accurately interpret a dream? Finally, he was told where he could find such a wise man. He came to the sage, and he said, I'm actually a king. I won many battles. And then he explained, and he told him the whole story about his dream. He says, I cannot interpret, interpret it, replied the sage, but there's a certain time on a certain day of a certain mind. When I gathered together all the incense 
and they blend them into a mixture. I allow a person to inhale the smoke of these incense. The person thinks of what he wants to see and know, and then he knows everything. The king decided. He said, hey, I waited so long. I'll just wait a little longer for that special day. The day came, and the king inhaled the smoke. The king be began to see what had happened to him before he was born, when he was a soul in the upper universes. He saw that his soul was being led through all the spiritual worlds. And, and an announcement was being made, asking that anyone who had anything to say against this soul should come forth. No one had anything to say against him. Suddenly someone came and said, Master of the world, listen to me. If this soul comes to the world, I will not have anything more to do. For what did you create me? The one who was screaming was the evil one himself. He was answered, This soul must certainly go down to the world. You must devise your own plan. The evil one left. The soul was then led further through the spiritual worlds until it was brought to the, to the place on high, so it will be bound by an oath. Before a person comes into this world, they have, to, they have to take an oath and say that they will be righteous and they will not be wicked. Meanwhile, the evil one had not returned. A messenger was sent to fetch him, and he finally came, and he brought with him an old man. He was an acquaintance of this old man from previous experiences. The evil one left and said, I have already devised a plan the soul can go down into the world. The king was then released. The soul was then released, and it went down to the world. The king then saw everything that happened to him from the beginning to the end. He saw how he would become a king and fought many wars. He took prisoners, and among them was a beautiful woman who had every possible type of grace. However, the grace was not hers, but became because of a beautiful diamond that was on her neck. This diamond had every type of grace. Rabbi Nachman did not tell any more than this, but there is, ver there is much, much more. Like we said in the beginning, this is a story that doesn't say so much, but yet it does shed light on our life here in this world and the life of Sadiqim that they have to come into this world and there are those that are going to fight against you and try to quiet you down and make make upheavals and say, yeah, that guy's acting not not properly. But at the end, a person that's looking for the truth will always win. What does it mean a person that's looking for the truth? To know we have a, a book and we have a page and that is the Torah itself. You might want to interpret it as the page as a daf. A person that has Torah study every single day, no matter what. You hold on to the daf yomi or even a halakha daily or something. You hold on to something. Yes, there'll be battles. Yes, you'll go through ups and downs. But at the end of the day, you will win the war. Stay connected. Keep on going. And stay tuned to the next story. Story number eight, the rabbi's son. Thank you for joining.